yep, brings with us. Ah, oh, hello everyone. Welcome to Tapping with G. New, all these new names everywhere. <laughs> We're going to be tapping all over the place. Um, thank you, EWN. We love being here with this group. And I am bringing a topic I've never brought to GP to do before. Um, it gets weaved in around there. But today I wanted to talk about and have G take us through some tapping for helplessness. So feeling help. I know even your face got sad. Because... And it's not just like that helplessness, like not like, just like a victim. It's more like useless. I feel useless in this situation. I have no mm. power, no control. It's overwhelming. It's too big. I can't do it. There's just nothing. And that was really like a strong feeling for me. I thought, you know, um, sometimes whether it's our own selves, like an illness or it's the world is just like, it's just so much. So internal, external I feel like illnesses are still external, even though they're inside of us. Um, but that kind of that kind of helplessness. And I was going to ask to start this conversation up when we are feeling helpless or useless. Yeah, I want to say useless, like they're just like defeated. Um, is that coming from I'm not enough or I always fail or. I'm just, I don't have the energy for it. Where is that coming Interesting. from? Interesting. Well, helpless and useless are very different. Yes. Yeah, very, very different. So um, thank you for confusing me right from the get-go. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> which, Finally! Which, which, which direction was she going to go? Boy, like, <laughs> yes. it's, it's like, uh, it's like tracking, tracking a bug. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> okay, <laughs> enough of that. Um, the feeling of being useless is when there's this mismatch between you and your environment you just don't fit where, where do i fit in what do i have to offer where you know and this this it's not necessarily a bad thing it, it can be if you look around um if you look around and you say you know what there's really not much i can do here i'm not yet much value here you know every father will face that with his kids right? <laughs> you know, I go to help my son and there's only so many things I can do. There's certain things I'm, I'm just become useless. Right. <laughs> right. And you kind of, you kind of go, you know, it hurts. Right. But then it's in context though. Right. I mean, there's other people who find me useful. Right. <laughs> A few of them. So, um, so it, it, if it becomes something that's this chronic feeling, it can become, the moment it steps out of in this particular circumstance and environment, I don't have much to offer. And if that, if you run into that enough, it can be, it can become interpreted as if it's a pair, a permanent characteristic of you. I'm, I guess I'm just useless. I don't have any purpose in life. Nobody needs me for anything. Right now it's different. Right? And it will, it will, it will feed on the feeling of helplessness because there's nothing you can do about it, right? If, in fact, you are useless as, <clears throat> as a matter of absolute fact, <laughs> that, that's your, that is your only inherent quality is you don't have any, um, then there isn't anything you can do about it. If it's inherent, right? If it is you, there's nothing you can do about it, right? And that's when it becomes... That's when it becomes so debilitating. It's like feeling like I'm not enough, right? It, it, when that feeling is there as a, as a sense of a permanent characteristic, there's no way out. <laughs> and this is what we have to become alert. Uh, alert to everything is circumstantial, right? You know, I, I can go some places, you know, for the people here, I'm very useful. I can go to other places. It's like zero. Right? I've got nothing to offer here. <laughs> and that's yes. just that's the way it, that's just a fact of life. And people who have been really beat down their whole lives, starting with parents and traumas and maybe relationships and that sort of thing, can be can become so constricted that they don't even try. They assume I'm not going to have much to offer, and therefore they don't even look to find out whether they do or not. <laughs> yes. And that's a tragedy. I think that's where, yeah, it, 
if we, I like that you said it as a characteristic. So not just like an identity, you're not all in on this. It's just, this is, this has now become a part of my world, my verbiage, my beliefs, how I operate. Mm -hmm. And, and then eventually the value, but I like how it can be not positive, but when we recognition, there's nothing I can offer in this situation. It's just um, now yeah. coming to terms with that might be tricky because I might look at, <laughs> I'll take this as the global scale. Like I want to save all the animals in the whole world. Well, I can't, but so <laughs> right at, at that point, you know, there's, there's a recognition that I can do certain things, but I can't do everything and how, how to be at peace with that. Yes. It, right. And in your son's lives or children's lives or people's lives that you, you love. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and also too, with um, illness, I do want to bring illness into this equation too. Whereas it just might, maybe you just backing off and not trying to fix it or do this or, or try to make it go away or all these things. That is what you can offer. You're not helpless because you, in fact, take by taking no action is taking action. <laughs> Well, if it's if it's a conscious recognition, right, and that you realize, and if you recognize that that your presence still has value, right? oh, right, then you can just stay there, support, cheer on, or whatever, right. Um, it may not be the the role that you want, and sometimes there's absolutely nothing, you know. I've had stuff like when I was in work and that sort of thing, you know, in that kind of world. I go, you know what? You guys are working so I've gotten there's nothing more I can add to it. And just, you know, on your way. That can only come from a feeling of confidence, right? That can't come from a feeling mm. <laughs> from an absence of of uh, of confidence. But you know, I get asked all the time how do I introduce non duality or spirituality to somebody, right? My parents are talking like this all the time and you know, I've got my uh my crazy uncle comes at Thanksgiving, you know, who's <laughs> a mega, mega Republican. What do I do? And I said, well, start with nothing because maybe there isn't anything you can do. Okay. You know, from the point of view of trying to change somebody's mind about something, pretty much everything you do is going to be useless. Right? But instead, what do you do? Well, you practice mindfulness. You be a good listener. You, you take it in. You don't react. Right? You, d you don't give the kind of, uh, of uh, feedback, in, 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 incendiary f feedback that, that eggs them on. You know, you know the energetically, there's all sorts of ways in which we signal that I'm not participating. Yeah? Yeah. Even if you're stuck, like in a family event where you just can't just get up and walk out, right? You, know, you may just, your best friend may be the cranberries. Yes, yes. So maybe what we can do is maybe it's the judgment of our actions. So no action, action, not enough action, not the right action. Like it's the judgment of of that that can lead us to feeling helpless. Mm -hmm. So could we maybe we could help people out? And please, I invite you to do, leave some comments for us. And if this topic, if it's touching, you know, you guys in your life and you think, yeah, I have a little bit of that or, or something that's coming up for you. Just uh, please pop it in the comments. We're here for another 20 minutes. We're going to do some tapping, mm -hmm. um, but maybe some tapping around. It, it's okay that we're judging it at first to feel like, wow, I, I feel helpless in the situation um, or no value, but then to bring it to a place where we can, we can be at peace. And if it doesn't, it doesn't because we're not here to fix things. <laughs> yeah. Let, let's, <clears throat> let's do this. Everybody can start tapping. Follow Lisa. I'm going to tap in my hands today. And you can do the points thing. Just as I'm talking. I won't do a formal EFT thing yet. <clears throat> Maybe not at all. You're never actually helpless. As a state. They're, it's different to think I'm helpless rather than, well, right now, there's nothing I can do. So... If I have, I can either leave or I can go, well, maybe just being present, maybe something will happen. You know? Remember, life is impermanent. It's changing all the time. This second, there's nothing you can offer. Two seconds later, there is. You know, two seconds later, you could have just the right word that avoids a war. 
<laughs> I mean, that, it's how powerful it is. If we're present. Presence negates helplessness. Every time. It, negate, it negates uselessness every time. Right? Because presence is fully alert, fully aware, always, it's a loving awareness. So it's always looking for the opportunity to raise the vibration, to shift the conversation, to, to open hearts, to, to bring something of value to the moment. You, 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 it's not necessarily the case that you're going to be able to. <laughs> but if you stay with that presence and presence and that with that desire, well, what more can you do? You, you have done what 99% of the people never do. <laughs> Just stay present and wait for, wait for the highest possible answer. Now, what does that feel like? It's kind of an affirmation, right? That, well, I'm never really ever helpless. Right? But affirmations can be, can be kind of, can actually frustrate the system. Unless you're doing this. <laughs> because if you're also tapping, you're communicating to the system that it's okay, you're safe. Right? And if you're safe, defenses come down. And if defenses come down, Positive messages can get in. They won't otherwise. Matter of fact, they'll even bypass the mind. The mind will start stop arguing. Because I, notice, if I was to just say, you're never really helpless, your mind go, yeah, right. But when I said it just now, your mind didn't do it. Because there's a whole bunch of other information coming in right now. So... So, what if I do feel helpless? Okay. What if helplessness is just a feeling? Because I feel helpless doesn't mean I am. <laughs> you know, I've seen some very... my Both of my kids are very smart, right? And kid, when they're kids in their school, they're trying to learn something. I'm so stupid! <laughs> right? Is it true? No. <laughs> it's a feeling in the moment. When thing, it, something's harder than you thought it was going to be. When things don't work the way you want. The question we're posing right now to our whole nervous system is, is it that a fact about me? Or just a temporary condition? Yep, there are times when I'm helpless. When I'm trying to get that job promotion and I just don't get it, nothing I can do. You know, trying so hard to ask the girl at the coffee shop out, it's <laughs> just not working. <laughs> yep, you're helpless. You run out of moves. Yeah. But that does, does that mean that it's a condition? That it's a permanent condition? characteristic of you, an attribute of you, or just a feeling that comes and goes. The mistake we always make is mistaking feelings, which are transient, always coming and going. They hang around longer than thoughts do, for sure, but they do go. Anybody ever had a feeling they still have? <laughs> they come and go, right? which means they're not permanent. They are not a permanent condition. They are, they are a combination of you and your energy and where you are this day and the environment you're in and the people you're with. Infinitely varied. So what if... Oh, let's stretch it a bit. What if there's absolutely nothing wrong with you? Ever. It's uncomfortable feelings. We do stupid things. Okay? We make stupid mistakes, oftentimes, many times in a row. <laughs> right? But 
what if that doesn't mean anything about you? This is just what human beings do. This is what happens to us. What if none of that self-talk, that self-criticism was actually true? Believed it to be true. <laughs> Acted as if it was true. What if it isn't? Just take that question in. We don't have to force anything. We don't have to make an affirmation. We don't have to hold a thought until your, the veins pop out of your neck. Just ask the question, what if that's not really true about me? Feelings do come and go. Sometimes I feel useful. Sometimes I feel useless. Sometimes I feel totally confident and strong. Sometimes I feel totally helpless. Sometimes I see a million different moves I could make. Sometimes there isn't one. What does that say about me? What, what am I? Am I? Am I helpful or helpless as a permanent thing? Or if I'm just here with a desire to help? Okay, take a deep breath. Stop. Take a deep breath and just see what that feels like. I like how you brought in it. Um feeling the impermanence of it all and the combination the feelings are a combination of environment of of our witnessing like that's not it, our feelings aren't even one thing they're just, no like no <laughs> they're like everything it's a different recipe yeah. every time they're one element in this incredibly complex landscape uh, and one day something could happen and just, yeah, whatever, blow right by you, right? The next day it's like, oh, no, you're pulling your hair out. Hair, hair out. There's nothing permanent, right. permanent about it. Remember those times when you fell in love? I mean, nobody could say anything to you that would, <laughs> that would offend you, right? <laughs> you're just floating, right? Yeah. But then other times you could, you could really, really take it very personally. If we really become aware that it is just this constant fluctuation that's coming and going. None of it will, will, will cease to be, be of any, any lasting importance. The importance will just, well, it's important now and now it's not. It's just gonna, it's going to come and go. This is how we give meaning to our lives. Yeah. This is how you choose what the meaning of your life is. No, no great, you know, nobody in the sky saying, this is where your life is for. Um, that doesn't exist. It's just you do it. <laughs> and, the, and the friendly reminder that when we're choosing a few shows back, episodes back here, we were talking about how when choosing from the softened heart, choosing from the open heart, and that's the most important way, place to know is that where are you choosing from? Because if you're choosing from yes. the closed heart and the 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 non-loving parts, you, you're gonna you're gonna feel the, the hopeless and helplessness. And the, you are. You, you, well, that's when that's when the times when you are hopeless, <laughs> helpless, and uh, and useless um, are in that position. When there's a strong attachment, I've got to do something. It's going to feel painful. Otherwise, if it's just okay, this is the way it is. It'll feel peaceful right? because you don't know what's coming one second from now. If anybody does, if anybody here knows what your next thought is going to be, Lisa and I will give you your money back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, and then we're going to hire you from now on, so we know what know what's happening. <laughs> Absolutely, we're going to. We're, yeah, we're going to. You and I are going to go to Las Vegas together. <laughs> that's so funny. I just found out this morning that my friend went to Vegas last week. Um, that's so weird that came up. Um, yes. Okay. We have, cause we, we've, we've got, it's a shorter show for us here. So I want to make sure I get to um, say hello to everybody. We have somebody from Ireland. That's so funny too, because we just made some new friends in Ireland. This is just fun. Life is fun. All right. Um, hello, Ava. And, 
Okay, Plyan, I had really low self-esteem when I was younger. Social, anxious, hiding, and all of that. That's not really the case any longer, but I sometimes feel old traces from it when I interact with the world. Yeah. Yeah. And don't make that a problem because it's not. Of course you are. You know, I feel stuff coming up from stuff that happened in my childhood. You know, all of a sudden I'll see a reaction and go, oh, <laughs> I know you. <laughs> it, it, this is an incredibly complex machine that has so, so many millions of various kinds of little programs that are there to, to try to handle every possible thing that could happen. And in this process of awakening and healing, where we are disconnecting the connecting those triggers thank god we don't have to disconnect them all we'd never be done i mean the thing it's just too complex and and too in depth but instead what we do is we cultivate a just a loving awareness and equanimity so that when it comes up we just go oh there it is again and there's no residue it's the cloud passing through the sky the sky, the sky remains untouched. So when, when sometimes I feel old traces from it when I interact with the world. Good. Leave it at that. I can say exactly the same thing. It's a fact for everybody. So if, if it stops there, you know, full, full stop and, 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 and doesn't have a therefore I got to work harder. I got to do something. I gotta, if you put all that aside the end of it is right there right? <laughs> it has it has no it has no place to stick there's no velcro left in you mm. it's really there's there's a, a story of a, a woman who had a very spontaneous full awakening on a bus in france in paris actually just out of nowhere you know kind of like ramana har she had no it was not really involved not looking for it Right, a lot of people who've meditated for thirty years were very jealous. <laughs> but after that, a, a, after that, and she had it verified by various teachers and 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 Zen masters and the like. But she, she said that for the next twelve years, she was in constant anxiety, constant. She was, was punctuated with terror, right? right? And she, it, the whole, it was very confusing to her because at the same time she's like, oh, right. So she finally went to one Zen master to have a, and sat with him for a while. And she told him the whole story. And he said to her, when fear arises, fear arises. That's it. And it broke open for her. She realized that the fear coming up, she had projected on it that it was a problem and that she wasn't really awake and what was happening. And, 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 and so she was experiencing this thing that was completely created by her mind. When fear comes up, it, fear comes up. Nothing more. Mm -hmm. At that point, it has no meaning. It is just an aberration. You know, exactly the, exactly the same. An old habit comes up, an old habit came up. Full stop. Mm -hmm. And it's subtle because you'll find the way our minds and our emotions immediately want to jump into a story about it, right? Want to give it context and meaning and what we're going to do and what it, and especially what it means about me. It's always attaching to the identity. So if it really has no context, it didn't come from anywhere. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. It has no meaning, no intent, no purpose, no nothing. Then you just go, oh, there it is. Look at that. And on about your business. And it's over. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm literally, I hope that helped you plan. I'm literally sitting that, with that because something happened just days ago. Something came up and I was like, oh, I forgot that I even had that. That happened before. And then I was like, I don't make a story right now, sitting here, listening to your words, GP. I was just like, yeah, so what? I got nervous. It came up. There you go. Now it's back then. And that doesn't mean I'm going to be nervous again. It doesn't mean, you know, and uh, I love that. I actually can feel that happening in the moment there. So thank you. It, for it's that. so, it happens so fast that something comes up and a story in the story begins to cascade. It happens so fast. Oh. We don't realize they have nothing to do with each other. Yeah. <laughs>
I, I like how that feels right now. I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, ah, good. I don't need to get that story going. <laughs> but no, we are going to wrap up, but I do want to read what um, uh, Sean, if we believe, if I believe my next thought will be pickles, then I can seemingly control the thought after the belief, but only temporarily. And I didn't control the original pickle. Nor did you control any thought that came after it. Or any thought, yes. It's yes. just not, it's, if you look carefully, what were you going to think after you thought pickle? Right? To eat one. <laughs> yeah. You could be, I, I, eat one or, you know, but if uh, my next thought's going to be, it could have been elephant. You know? Could have been nosebleed. I mean, <laughs> there, right, right, you don't know what it's going to be. I, I mean, we, we really have to admit to ourselves that we do not control our thinking. <laughs> and we don't have to. <laughs> we don't have to. And if it really becomes obsessive, that's when I say breathe and tap. Don't even, don't even say words. Just breathe and tap. Breathe and tap. Communicate to your body. It's okay. We're safe. Slow the breath. That says we're tap. That says we're safe. Another thing you can do, which is really helpful, just put a little half smile on your face. Why are you doing it? I'm all or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're all. Yeah, you only have. Yeah, you only have ten and zero. Yeah. Just you know, oh, like that little that Buddha, point. that little Buddha half smile, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, that too sends a message to the body. Also, putting your tongue at the top of your mouth while you're breathing through your nose also tends to slow the mind down. It also things. tightens up. <laughs> 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 Great <yoga. laughs> um, so here you go, tapping and a beauty tip. <laughs> there we go. You get everything here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was. I'm so glad we did that round. You know what? I love what um, Eglay said there. You know what? Just a little bit of tapping always. You know what? That's why. Just doing it for even five, ten minutes. It's always helpful. It's always Yeah, it's do it just even when you're sitting. I'm through. sitting in a public place right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I <laughs> and right. I am getting some looks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. That's an invitation. Somebody <laughs> might think, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, what is that guy? You're listening to half the conversation, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. So well, thank you everybody for being here with us. Uh, we would love it if you give us a thumbs up or you know, or share this. Actually, that's what I wanted to say was please share this video with somebody. Just you never know how this can help somebody and just be the right thing at the right time. And it might be their next thought. And they're like, hey, look at that. So we just really appreciate that and just continue watch it again, do it over and just tap and continue re leaving comments because we'll come back and read them and see them and we can we can put them towards the next show. And please tune in to gpwalsh.com to well or the youtube channel tomorrow because we will be doing home school live so we have fabulous <laughs> topics for that tomorrow and we'll see everybody then thank you so much gp it's a pleasure thank you lisa <laughs> <laughs>